Okay, so where we were talking about functions, every input has one output. Before that, we were talking about domain and range. So let's put those both together and now specifically talk about the domain of functions. Okay, so we're going to look at it as graphs and we're going to look at it as an equation. If I give you either of these things, hey, what's the domain, what's the range? All right, so let's look at it in graphs. Graphs should be the easy one because you have a picture there to go by, right? So let's take it first, the domain. Domain, we know are all the x values. Where are x values on the graph? They're along the x-axis, they're the horizontal ones. Okay, so all I have to do is visually look at the picture and uh, sweep my eye from left to right. I want to go from smallest to biggest. And see, what do I have for my x values? Now, sometimes it can get tricky because you have to remember how to read the graph. Look at this parabola that's right here. Whenever this parabola goes to the edge of the graph, does that mean it stops right there? No. Like most teachers want you to put an arrow on the ends of it, like the arrows that are on this flipping math logo that's up here, right? You'd want to put some arrows on there so it's easy to, for you to go, oh yeah, it goes on forever. But just because they don't have them doesn't mean it's going to stop there. If it stopped there, I would actually want some sort of point, like a visual point, so I can indicate that it's going to stop. So I would see this graph and I would assume it goes on forever. So it doesn't just stop at, say, 1, 2, 3, negative 3 to 3. It doesn't. It's the whole entire x-axis. Can you picture this parabola getting wider and wider and wider and wider and wider and wider and wider? That's exactly what it's going to do, even though I don't see that information. So I would say that the range, or not the range, the domain on this is all real numbers. And so here are a whole bunch of ways that I could write that. I could use that double stroke or that blackboard R for, there, there you go, that's all real numbers. Or I could write it in set builder notation, one of these two things. The set of all x such that x, what does that little stretched out e mean? Is an element of the real numbers. Or I could write it as an inequality in the set builder notation from negative infinity to infinity. Maybe I want to write it in interval notation. So in interval notation, it makes it look like the ordered pair because it's in parentheses. It's from negative infinity to infinity. Any of those things you might see, that means all real numbers. That's definitely what this graph gives us. Okay. So let's like look at the next one. Next one is same exact graph, but just the range. The range are all the y values. Y values are on the y-axis. This is vertically. So we want to go from smallest to biggest. That's from the bottom all the way up to the top. Go from the bottom to the top. What is the smallest value all the way up to the biggest value? So on this parabola, it's very easy to see that the vertex point that's down there at the bottom, your graph doesn't go below it. So it has to start at that number, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. And then it just keeps going higher and higher. Again, I am assuming that this graph, this parabola, goes upwards forever, even if there's no arrows there. So I would say, for my range, my range is greater than or equal to 4, negative 4, I should say, negative 4. So I could write it as an inequality, or if I'm being particular about it, if I'm going to write it in set builder notation, I just put some curly brackets around that, the set of all y, such that y is greater than or equal to negative 4. Or maybe I want to use uh, interval notation on it. Smallest to biggest, what's the smallest number? Negative 4. Is it included? Yes, so it gets a bracket all the way up to positive infinity. So domain and range with a graph is pretty easy because you're just doing a visual inspection, sweeping from left to right for the domain and down to up for the range. So let's try that right here on exercise 5. There go those concrete mixer trucks that are going down the hallway again. Okay, so here I just have a line. I just have a line. I want to know what the domain and the range is. I'm just going to write these in interval notations this time. So it's definitely a function. I don't know why I don't have to indicate that because it passes the vertical line test. But if I sweep from left to right, just because this line seems to end right there, I'm going to say there's an arrow there because nobody put like a dot colored in or open or whatever, so it's going to go on and on forever, and it's going to eventually take up this whole entire x-axis, so its domain 
It's all real numbers. I can write that as from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, and the range. Range, going from down to up. It doesn't stop at the bottom of this graph. It doesn't stop at the top. It's going to go up and up and down and down. It's also all real numbers. And I, I can I guess write it the same exact way. All right, so here are two additional graphs. I want you to see if you can piece together what the domain and the range is for each of these as well. Okay, pause the video, write down to yourself some domain and range, and then let's check. All right, so let's see. Do your answers match up with these? Mm -hmm. They shouldn't because I made a very, very common mistake on the second one. So, uh, it's very, very common for students to look at a graph and only write down a domain and range for whatever they see. Or whatever they see is on the x-axis, right there in front of them, not assuming that the graph's going to get wider and wider and wider, or higher or lower, okay? So, it is wrong to say that this only goes from negative 2 to positive 2. Because this graph, this is called a cubic graph, is going to get wider and wider and wider the further and further I go out on the x-axis uh, in either direction. So really, this should have been all real numbers. And the range, exactly the same thing. I'm supposed to assume, even though I don't see it, I'm supposed to assume that there's arrows on uh, that graph, so it's supposed to go both all the way down, all the way to wherever forever is, and all the way up. So, also, all real numbers. On the third one, um, I wrote down the correct answer. So, the domain is all real numbers, even though it's, it seems pretty skinny, it only looks like it's going somewhere from negative 2 to 2, it's still going to eventually get fatter and fatter and fatter and fatter as it gets further away from the x-axis. So, all real numbers, and then its range, it is everything from negative infinity up to, and I just had to count up the tip marks, all the way up to 9. Okay, so there we go. And, and I will pre-teach you some vocabulary that we're going to see in a little bit. The first one, it is a line. That's a linear function. And the other two are not lines. They are nonlinear functions. That's Okay, so now let's look at it as equations. Most students have, uh, can do the graphs a lot easier than the equations, but I'm going to give you some ways to help you out with the equations so it's not so tough. Okay, So, the domain, first of all, the domain is just asking you, what am I allowed? I have an equation, but what am I allowed to stick into it? Do I get to stick anything I want to in for it? Sometimes it's an easier question to answer, what can I not stick into it? If I have a square root, I want to think, oh, I've got a square root. It's easier to think about, oh, it can't be negative, than what can I stick into it, okay? For the range, the range I'm looking for all of the possible y values. What can you get for the y values that you had for your original domain? And again, it's, it's sometimes easier to answer a question like, well, what can I not get for y? What is impossible to get for y? So asking it from another point of view is often a little bit easier for you to answer. So let's look at a couple of cases here, okay? Number one. Number one is a quadratic equation, y equals uh, x squared plus 2 for the domain. All I'm looking for is a domain. I'm not looking for the range right now, I just want the domain, okay? What am I allowed to stick in for x? That's one question I can answer. Or I can answer, is there anything I'm not allowed to stick in for x? So look at that equation. Is there anything that you can't square? Can you square 5? Can you square negative 5? Square root of 5? Can you square pi? Is there anything you can't square? And the answer is, no, you, you can stick anything in for that x that you want to. No matter what it is, a real number. So the domain here is all real numbers. Okay. The second case, let's look in the middle. The, the second one's y equals the square root of x minus 2. It has a square root in it. Are there any kind of numbers that we cannot take square roots of? 
negative ones. So whatever is underneath the square root symbol, which is called the radicand, that can't be negative. Not negative. So this is what you do. You take whatever is underneath that square root symbol, x minus 2 in this case, and you set it greater than, that's going to make it positive, or equal to 0. Because you could take the square root of 0, that's OK. Now just solve that. So add the 2 over. So x has got to be greater than or equal to 2. As long as it's greater than or equal to 2, you can take the square root and you'll be fine. Right? If I stick in 2 here, 2 minus 2 is 0, it works. If I stick in a number that's bigger than that, let's stick in 3. 3 minus 2 is 1, I can take the square root of 1. But if I made it smaller than that, let's stick in the number negative, or stick in the number 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Square root of negative 1, not a real number anymore. So here we go. I'll write this in um, interval notation for the domain. Uh, the smallest number, I'm saying it's greater than 2, so it's got to start at 2. It can be equal to 2, and then goes to positive infinity. So there's the answer on that one. And, 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 let's box this one since I boxed the other one. And then finally, number three. Number three is what is called a rational function. Rational function because it looks like a ratio, like a fraction. And here you have y equals 1 divided by the quantity x plus 2. Okay, in this kind of equation, again, it's easier to ask, is there something I can't stick in for x? Well, it's a division problem. Is there any number you're not allowed to divide by? You can divide by positives, negatives, whatever you want, except zero. You're not allowed to divide by zero. So this bottom here, the denominator, is not equal to zero. And that's exactly what you do. You take the denominator, x plus 2, and set it not equal to zero. And then you solve it like it's an equation. Subtract the 2 over. x cannot be equal to negative 2. So if I look back at that original equation, if I stick in negative 2 in there, negative 2 plus 2 makes 0. 1 divided by 0, it's undefined. For everything else, it's OK. So if I'm going to write this in inter interval notation, this might be a little bit tricky. So it's easier for me to look at a graph. So here's 0. Here's negative 2. It gets an open circle. Everything else is colored in. Everything over here is colored in. Let's go from left to right goes from negative infinity all the way up to negative 2. Doesn't include 2, negative 2. Union, then it starts at negative 2 again. Doesn't include it. And then goes all the way up to infinity. So there's the domain of that rational function in interval notation. So let me summarize that up there for you in a pretty nice little uh, visual. For a pro tip on finding the domain when you're given any equations, there's essentially two things that you have to worry about that limit the domain. In other words, that make it so that it's not all real numbers anymore. And the first one is the denominator of any fractions can't be zero. So that was like the third, third problem that we just did. So you set the denominator not equal to zero, and then you solve it. That's the numbers. Those are the numbers that you have to take out. Okay. And the other one involves square roots. Square roots can't be negative. And on those, that was like the second one that we did, you want to set the radicant, the stuff that's underneath the square root symbol, greater than or equal to 0 and solve. So those are the two cases that limit your domain whenever you have an equation. So I believe that's it on this section.